He's getting older. Pour some sugar on me! Oh, hit the full button! But not wiser. Bonarama! This is The Lefty Show. Welcome, everybody, to The Lefty Show. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with all of you today, Thursday. It is Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday, the 2nd of October in the year of our Spaghetti Monster 2014. Welcome on, welcome all to the to the Lefty Show, episode number 97. We are getting ever so close to, uh, to episode number 100 of the Lefty Show, and no, I don't know what I'm going to do for it. Maybe find a guest or something, you know, get, uh, get somebody involved. The show? Huh? Huh? I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll look into it. Thank you to everybody for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to find the show in its YouTube formation, as well as gaming and vlogging content. Uh, podcasts, of course. Duh. Derp. There. Thank you to everybody that's been following me on Twitter at Lefty643, as well as everybody who has been sharing the show with friends, family, and coworkers, it really does help the show grow. Try it out for yourself wherever you get your podcasts, for your PC, tablet, or mobile device, Android or iOS, it does not matter. Search The Lefty Show wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to subscribe to the feed and download all the episodes at your leisure. And thank you to everybody that has been donating. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. That's I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. Been a there's been kind of a lack of content, uh, a, a lack of things to make this show go recently. Um, so this may be another a, a truncated show. I'm not sure. Uh, pl we'll play it by ear as uh, as the phrase goes, as we move along here in uh, in the show today. Uh, thank you to uh, again. What, do I have any propers left? I just <laughs> I just started going into it without. Do I have any? Anything? No? All right, I think I got them all. Yeah, pretty sure you did. Thank you, Eugene. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing something that I don't pay you to do. You don't pay me at all. Yeah, I know. I know I don't pay you. It's because I don't want to. Because you're a bastard. Uh, we got some updates on the on the, the Ebola in the United States case. The, the case zero. I guess it would be case zero or case one. Because patient zero is the index case, right? I don't know why they call it patient zero. Because I, zero means nothing. Zero is a lack of something. But the person is a something. So thus equating them with zero doesn't make sense to me. I just, I don't know. I'm weird like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. Where something just that short, that just that, just that small, just that minuscule, can completely derail what, what I'm talking about on a crappy podcast or what I'm thinking about in in, in any given uh, scenario, or or could it, in the case of a movie, it can completely suspend my disbelief or suspend my suspension of disbelief. It brings disbelief back into the equation, like brings it to the front door. Hey, you remember this guy? Oh crap! Damn it! Now I can't watch Bruce Willis do all these things. Like when you get shot, Bruce Willis, and die hard, you bleed a lot. And I get that you're a cop, but there's a couple times in that movie where he gets shot. I mean, the foot thing is one, you know, running on broken glass, okay, is one thing, but he gets shot like a couple times. And I understand in the moment, adrenaline keeps you going, but you still got to go get. You got to go get Hans, Hans Gruber. You still got to go get him. You were shot by the albino dude. Or, well, he was just blonde. I don't think he was actually albino. He had blonde hair. His brother was albino, a true albino. He had tiny feet. But you get shot a couple times, and you're bleeding a lot, and it's a shoulder wound. As I understand it, those bleed a lot, and they're hard to bandage because you, you move your shoulder for everything. You, know, you got to move your arm. You move your shoulder. And so by the time, spoiler alert, by the time Bruce Willis gets the Christmas tape to go confront 
Hans Gruber and that other guy. It's like you should be bleeding out, dog. You got you've been bleeding for like a long time. But I don't know. Just stuff like that where it's like, oh, this is patient zero. Or this is the, this is the, you know zero day. What? What? What are you talking about? Zero is nothing. This is if something's happening on zero day, it's not zero day. If that if if that was said in a movie, I'd be like, what? Huh? No, you're doing something. Else. This is day one. This is ca- patient number one. Patient zero is the lack of a patient. Just think about it. Instead of in between patient and zero, put an equal sign. Okay, because patient zero. Instead of patient zero, go patient equal sign zero. What does that mean? Just by the simple addition of an equal sign, that tells you, oh, there are zero patients here. Okay, well, that's good, right? You don't want patients. But he, he is a patient, so patient equals one. Can't be zero patient. I just, it's my, I'm just a weird, just a weird dude, I guess. Just a weird guy. But uh, those are the kinds of things that occupy my thoughts, usually. Yeah, you know, trying to figure out stuff, you know, like, oh, dude, I got to do this, got to do that. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope. Uh Uh-uh. I'm all about, is patient zero, (laughs) is that a real term? Does that make any sense? And if it doesn't, then my whole day is ruined. Because Because then I spend, I spend the rest of the day rallying at the injustice of it all. You know, how can other people not understand that patient zero is a completely nonsensical term? It doesn't mean anything. I lead an interesting life, let me tell you. So we got some updates on the on the Ebola case. And I said in yesterday's show that um that it was you know, it was a progression of things in being everybody was told, don't be paranoid, don't be fearful of Ebola. Certainly in a chance to not you know, to tell people to just shut up and not be paranoid, but also to, 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 you know, you can't, if you take a hard line with Western African countries, there are a contingent of people in society who will call you racist because to say, oh, the Africans in Western Africa are incre- incredibly backwards and stupid because, well, they do a lot of backwards and stupid things there. And also they are distrustful of the people that have come to treat them and contain them and keep them from this super deadly virus. And also they get angry when the aid workers say, please don't kiss the dead bodies of the people who were killed by this super deadly virus. And they get angry at you say, Oh, this is our way. And they say, well, no, you can't do it if you want to live, but then they get it. And then they say, what are you doing to us? Look, we're still getting it. It's like, well, you, cause you guys are backwards and stupid. Because you still believe in stupid spirit gods or whatever you believe in, or you've been brainwashed by Christian missionaries. Who knows? But you have all these stupid things that you do, and it's continuing to... It's supposed to be, supposedly, we've been told, Ebola kills people off so quickly that once they present with Ebola, they've got the timer starts, they've got like a week, two weeks, and then they're done. But but even though Ebola is supposed to kill them off so quickly that the virus can't sustain itself because when you present you're isolated and then you can't you can't tra- theoretically you can't transmit the the virus anymore because you're isolated I mean you still can because you're sick with it but you're you or you present and then you're killed so quickly that you, you don't have a chance to but that hasn't happened in Western Africa. Why? This has been going on for months. And we were told originally by the people when we were, when it was originally reported that there was an Ebola outbreak. And it wasn't just a couple people. And we were told, it's like, oh, we're, there's a, yeah, you know, 50, uh, 100. All right, 250 now. People were like, well, this is it. This is the end. And everybody said, no, 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 no. Don't be a paranoid douche. No, don't worry about it. Don't be a penis. Don't be a penis. This is, this is fine. We'll contain this. No problem. We're good at containing this. And it, and it kills people off so quickly that it will burn itself out eventually. Once we get quarantine, 
methodology in place in Western Africa and and containment. Once we get it contained, once we run DE contained, we got to run DE contained on Camp Newton. You better do that, Chicago Bears. Jared Allen, I don't want to hear any more crap about pneumonia. You better contain Cam Newton. Make him beat you with his arm. And even that he might because Aaron Rodgers just, ah, uh, ah, uh, torched you. God, he's the best quarterback in the NFL. I'm just, I just got to say, Aaron Rodgers, Packers fans, enjoy what you're watching because right now you're watching Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the NFL. Anyway, I digress. We've been told, oh, it'll be, it'll burn itself out. Well, then it, that hasn't happened. It hasn't burned itself out. It's gotten worse. And the CDC says, everybody said, oh, well, there's only 3,500 people that have died from it. There's only 5,000 cases and 3,500 people have died from it. Well, uh, no. Because the CDC itself, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, says that their reporting of statistics is probably incredibly, incredibly on the low side because of underreporting from patients and local governments because they don't want to be seen as Ebola stricken because I don't know. I don't know how much tourism there is in Liberia. How many people are like, oh, God, I can't wait to go to Liberia? Up, oh, Ebola, damn it. Ah, my plans are ruined. Son of a bitch. You can't. Uh, no. So, regardless, the CDC, the report, the people reporting the numbers and the World Health Organization have said, yeah, these are the numbers that we can kind of, you know, are sure of. But our predictions, we've got, there could be as many as 220,000 dead or 1.4 million by January of next year. We don't know. We don't know. We know that the numbers we have now are incredibly underreported. And if we, if we project out just based on these numbers, we get that low end. But if we try to account for the fact that people aren't reporting the fact that they have Ebola and local governments aren't reporting to us and, or to other governing agencies, that they have so many people of their, of the, so many population, so many of their population, so many of their citizens are afflicted with Ebola and have died from it. If we try to account for that, we get 1.4 million people. We get the upper bracket of, holy crap, this is going to be really bad. And time and time again, people have said at every turn, it was initially, oh, this, this, it kills you too quick to, it kills you too quick to, to sustain itself. That was initially, don't worry, paranoids, you're idiots and dumb because you're worried about this. Okay. Then the disease continued. Then the outbreak continued and it worsened. Then we were told, oh, no, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. We're good at containing it. We're good at containing it. We'll get this under control and then it will burn itself out. Well, that hasn't happened either. Then the CDC started importing Ebola patients and victims into Atlanta, into their headquarters for treatment and testing. And people said, uh, what? What happened? Why are you doing that? And oh, by the way, why are people still traveling from Western Africa? Why are you still allowing this? Then people said, oh, no, 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 don't worry. You're, you're being paranoid. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It'll never, it'll never present in America. Don't, it's contained in Western Africa. And now, now we've got patient one who tried to go to the hospital last week and was sent home with antibiotics and then again had to be, then somebody had to call the hospital or he called the hospital to, and they sent an ambulance to pick him up and he was seen puking outside of his apartment complex. Now the thing about Ebola now I don't and I don't even, I don't even know how real this is because here here's the thing the people that have been supposedly that are supposedly Ebola experts that have been telling me and telling us don't worry don't worry don't worry this is all fine those people are experts and I and I and I trusted what they said okay Ebola kills you too quick for the outbreak to be substantial well the outbreak's substantial now don't worry we're really good at containing it okay so it won't sustain itself well, the outbreak has been substantial, and now it's sustained. Don't worry about people traveling. We're good at identifying, and it won't get here. Well, now it's here. At every step of the way, Ebola experts have been wrong. So I don't know if I don't know what's a lie. I, I'm not trying to say they're incompetent. I'm trying to say they're lying, or it's it's probable that they are lying to try to just for a few again, like I said, a multitude of reasons. 
chief of which may be they don't want to appear to put this on, on the indigenous cultures of Western Africa because that might seem racist. Uh. But they are backwards and dumb, and they do backwards and dumb things with regards to a super deadly virus. So now we're told, well, you know, he's only, yeah, he was traveling. He took a United Airlines flight two days, two days after, two days after carrying, carrying an Ebola positive woman back to her hut or home or wherever from a hospital because they didn't have enough space for her in the Ebola section. He picked her up and carried her to the hospital. Picked her up and carried her. And they say no. Then he picked her back up and carried her back to her house. Ebola positive. And Ebola is transmitted through physical contact. And what do you do when you're in Africa? I'm guessing it's pretty hot, so you're probably sweating. You're exchanging bodily fluids. This guy didn't tell anybody. Eh, you know, I was in Liberia. I was in Western Africa. Yeah. And they go, oh, uh, uh, Bim Salah Bim, here's some antibiotics. Go on about your business. Now we're told that you only transmit Ebola. It's only communicable at the point at which pa- patients are presenting with symptoms. If you if you are vomiting and you've got diarrhea and a, and a severe fever from Ebola, you can transmit that Ebola. You may have the antibodies. You may be feeling fine and, quote, have Ebola, but you're not going to be able to transmit it. So they say. And again, I don't know. Because they've been wrong. The experts have been wrong. Or at least what they've said has not matched up with what we've observed at every step of the way. No, don't worry. Now we're supposed to believe. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're good at containing this. It'll be okay. There won't be an outbreak in America. Yeah, there's a guy here. And I say, well, wait a minute. You said this about the outbreak in Africa. Don't worry. It won't sustain itself because you're really good at containment. And you were wrong. You said, don't worry about people traveling from Western Africa. It won't present in America because you're really good at identifying and containing it. And you were wrong. Now we're supposed to say, don't don't worry. Don't worry. We're really, re- this time, trust us. We're really good at containing it. Well. What am I what are people supposed to believe? I mean, I, I've I've talked about it. I talked about it in nine when when discussing 9-11, what fear can can do to a society, what fear hath wrought. And there's a <laughs> Captain Picard said it in Star Trek The Next Generation. The road between legitimate suspicion and rampant paranoia is very much shorter than we think. And in the wake of 9-11, that was rampant paranoia. However, this time around, I look around and I say, hmm, well, I'm fearful, or I, I'm not really fearful. I'm just going to laugh and watch it happen. But I think other people are fearful of Ebola now being in America. And time and time, the, the three or four times that I can identify, there were people that, that were paranoid, and they were told to not be paranoid because of such and such a reason. But you turned out, you experts, you people pontificating uh, on Ebola turned out to be wrong. You were wrong. The outbreak spread, and then it sustained itself, and now it has presented in America. You don't have a very good track record with with saying, no, 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 don't worry, don't, don't be paranoid because this is how it really is. It seems reasonable to, on the, you know, fool me once, shame on you. This is the fourth time around, and we go, well, wait a minute. Why are we supposed to believe you again? Why are we supposed to believe you that, oh, no, we got this. We got this. Your track record isn't very good. Now, it may very well be that there won't be an outbreak in America, but it won't be because you were fu- you were right all along. You would probably just get lucky because you've been wrong on every other thing. Every other thing. So go ahead and be fearful, America. If you live if you live in America or if you live in a country where aid workers are freely traveling to and from Western Africa trying to contain Ebola you should worry and don't be don't let people try to make you feel awful for 
saying, hey, you know, maybe we should restrict travel from Western Africa. Maybe if you have been to Africa within the last three months, your passport is suspended. You will not be allowed back in our country. That's it. it because, and yes, people, people will be, unquote, unfairly displaced. Just regular well-meeting people will be put out because of this. I think Ebola is a pretty damn good reason to do that. Now just, oh, God, we got to make people feel safe. We got to make white people feel safe. So let's just screw around with them and create delays and all this crap. That's one thing. That's one thing. But this is Ebola. It's super deadly, and the outbreak hasn't done what we thought it was going to do. And in fact, given the underreporting, our projections are not at all good about what, what can happen. It seems like it may be time to reevaluate what we do and what we, how we treat it. And this kid gloves of, oh, don't worry, we've been training. When this, when and if this presents, we'll be okay. Uh, no, because now, now, this guy who, who, who again, was within the two-week incubation period for Ebola after being in contact with an Ebola-positive patient, physical contact, not just like, oh, I'm in your vicinity. No, physical, like I'm carrying you. And he still got on that plane and came home. He went, he went from, uh, uh, from Liberia to Brussels, Brussels to Dulles International, and then from Dulles to Dallas-Fort Worth. Boom, 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 boom. And that whole time, he had Ebola. And then he got sick. and was still uh, walking around. And when he got sick, he started being able to transmit it to other people, to family members. Now there's 80 people under observation, and that number keeps growing. 80 people under observation for Ebola. There's a second person being closely monitored after presenting with Ebola-like symptoms. Not Ebola, Ebola-like symptoms. And this guy, who knew full well, oh, this woman is Ebola positive. I carried her. I was in physical contact. I'm going to go ahead and get up, get on a plane and go back to America. Yay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, because I'm a hippy-dippy guy. Yeah, I helped. Hey, man, I helped Ebola in Western Africa. So you knowingly, even though you were within the two-week incubation period, you put yourself on a plane and put yourself in close proximity to other people who had nothing to do with your great personal risk. Well, yeah. This guy should be shocked. I hope Ebola gets him. Good. One less idiot. He's got it now. Good. I hope he gets I mean, You know what? Given that he's the, he's the prodigy, he's genetically linked to his family. I hope a few family members get it too. Idiots. You, why are we screwing around with Ebola? Why would we ever think to be laissez-faire about how we treat and quarantine and protect ourselves and just Joe Blow six-pack from Ebola. Why would we screw around with that? Oh, well, we'll, we'll try, to, we'll try to, uh, to contain it if it presents. There are idiots like this everywhere. You think this is the first guy? This is not the first guy. This is not the first aid, work, aid worker to be in close physical contact with an Ebola-positive victim and then in a short time span go home. I guarantee you there's going to be more guys presenting with Ebola. Not clustered, not clustered with this guy. I'm talking about Europe, European aid workers who went there and went to Western Africa and came back. People, more people from America, Canada. Aid workers are going to start within the next week or so, are going to start presenting more and more with Ebola. And I and I asked the same question. The same question that I asked yesterday. When what's the tipping point? What point, what is the point past which you go, okay, woo, no more of this. Holy crap. Just chop it all off. Just take it all. Get the, we'll take healthy tissue. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Poof, lop that bitch off. What's the point? Because the goalposts have been continually shifted. The goalposts have moved back and back and back. And now we're supposed to believe, well, even though we said it will never present in America or it's highly unlikely that it will, that it will present in America, now it has. Don't, 
but this time, really believe us when we say, don't worry, we're good at, good at containing it. You know, your history, your track record in Western Africa doesn't lead me to believe that you're really, really good at containing it. In fact, you're kind of bad from what I see. Oh, the mortality rate is only 50%. That's because you've, there are a lot of people, a lot of dead bodies with Ebola antibodies that weren't reported. All right, let's, uh, let's do some news. All right, we got uh, we got some good stuff to talk about today. Uh, this is from Fox 13, Salt Lake City, Dateline, Kenner, Louisiana. Two teachers are facing felony charges after two of them. Uh, that seems like clumsy wording. Two teachers are fa- facing felony charges after the, oh after the two of them allegedly had sex simultaneously with the then 16-year-old student who has been a student in both women's classrooms. Fox uh, Fox 13 News sister station WGNO reports 32-year-old Shelly Dufres, Dufres and 24-year-old Rachel Respis, both of whom are English teachers at Detheran High School, or Destrahan High School, face felony charges relating to the alleged sexual misconduct. Kenner Police Chief Michael Glazer tells WGNO the two teachers met with the student on September 12th and drove to Respess's apartment, where the three engaged in sexual acts that lasted until the early morning hours of September 13th. You have an educator, I guess. The responsibility is the safety uh, and education of the children. And when it goes outside those lines, I believe the community should be outraged, Glazer told WGNO. The student is now 17 but was 16 at the time of the incident, and WGNO reports that fellow students allege the student and the two teachers had been involved for some time and had even recorded some of the sexual encounters. Glazer, Glasner, this, okay, so these people, they, I, Seek has, has been implied throughout this entire thing because this guy's name keeps switching, I swear, in the copy from Glazer to Glasner. Glasner tells WGNO the student has been in the classroom of both women. This Rachel Respis was an English teacher of the victim last school year, so she did have some type of contact contact and knew him. Shelly Dufresne is is his current teacher, he said. Now, they got pictures, mug shots of these two teachers. Not bad. He scooped. I I I got to turn a fan on. I I don't mean to cuz they are they are rapists. They are statutory rapists and I don't mean to uh I don't know what the what, what's the opposite of victim shaming? Is there an opposite of it? Because you have victim shaming which is or victim blaming which is you know you were asking for it did you, what did you do to entice him? What did you, you know, did you want it? What did you do to, uh, to bring this upon yourself, which is supposedly universally bad. I believe that healthy skepticism, there's a place for being skeptical of somebody alleging rape. But what's the opposite of that? The op- what's the opposite? Like high five, like, yeah, bro, because here's what happened. This 16 year old kid negotiated a threesome with two, I don't know, I give, Rachel Respis, Rachel is probably a, oh, I give her a five. I don't know. She does, It doesn't look as though she's she's wearing makeup and she doesn't look happy after being arrested on, on sexual sexual assault charges. But uh, Shelly, Shelly Dufresne looks, uh, and she's the, she's, she's the 32 year old. She's not bad at all. You know, you go go to a bar and you, whoa, hey, you know, good solid seven or eight, I would say. This guy negotiated a threesome with two teachers, two female teachers, and apparently he's got some staying power. They they met with the student on September twelfth and rose to drove to Respess's apartment, where the three engaged in sexual acts that lasted until the early morning hours of September thirteenth. My God, man. All right, that's a high. F- don't you give that guy a high five? 
because unlike unlike the people that will just be completely outraged at how dare you question a rape victim and those people those people honestly forced the Montana judge to call a second a second sentencing hearing and reset and then removed himself from the case and the teacher the 34 year old teacher who was engaging in in a sexual relationship with a 14 year old student was instead of uh instead of the probation and the time served that he'd gotten the 10 years probation he's now serving 10 years in prison that's what that's what political outrage gets you is a complete redo of the justice system if it, it and this tells you if the public does not like the outcome of your trial what the f- i turned it you know you know i just uh, i usually mute google chrome i usually mute it i didn't this time because i forgot and then i get burned by an ad play when I didn't refresh the damn page. Son of a bitch. Anyway, if if society does not, if popular culture, if social media does not like the outcome of your trial and the sentencing, they will make you stand another sentencing hearing. The guy was sentenced. 10 years probation. Time served. He'd spent some time in jail. That's your punishment. And the judge said, because I believe the victim to be older than her chronological age. Now, what he means there was worded poorly. She is of sound mind that belies her biological age. She she is able to engage in sexual acts. In a second, she is able to to consent because she is aware of what's going on. And is more so aware than your average 14-year-old. She has, well, she is more cognizant of what is going on, the ramifications, both positive and negative, of her choices. And she is able to make adult choices at the age of 14. That's what the judge said. Given the evidence, this is what I think. There you go. And social media said, oh, it's completely impossible. How dare the judge blame the victim? Give him another hearing, and now the guy's spending 10 years in prison. That's great. Yay, yay. Is that justice? That's justice, huh? Because a bunch of neckbeards on Reddit and Facebook and Twitter, a 14-year-old was believed to be of cognizant mind to make adult decisions. Oh, my God, that can't be impossible because he's a right victim. Ah, outrage. And here's how, here's, how, here's how you know how much BS that is. Here's how you know how much BS it is that no woman under the age of 18 can possibly consent to sex with a, with, a, with a man or a woman over the age of 18. Here's how you know how crap that is. That somebody who is not technically an adult can consent or cannot ever consent to sex with an adult. Here's how you know how just BS and arbitrary that, that logic is. People will clap their hands. Clap their hands and rejoice at adolescents being charged with adult crimes and being tried as adults. People will clap their hands. It'll be, it will be heralded as justice that an adolescent teen be, tra- be tried, charged and tried as though he or she were an adult. And that's the court saying, that is the court saying, You are an adult in your frame of mind. Your consciousness is that of an adult. You were, at the time you committed this crime, you had the cognitive abilities of an adult. You had the the reasoning capacity of what we would consider an adult. And you were able to make choices that an adult would make and weigh consequences and weigh outcomes and do all those things. You were an adult were in an adult frame of mind when you committed this crime, we are charging and trying you as an adult. And people will rejoice at that. They will say, yeah, woo, justice, yay, go get them, put them in jail forever. 
It was a big deal when the two weird, just weird girls committed those slender, that, that attempted Slenderman murder, and they're being tried as, an, as adults. They're 13 and 14 years old. And those same people on Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, social media, everywhere, the same public, popular culture, rejoiced at them being tried as adults. I believe they were tried as adults. But you can find any number of cases, innumerable amount of cases, where younger, non-adults, adolescent teenagers, are tried as adults for heinous crimes because this, the prosecutor, the state, and, and even convicted and put away because the judge believes, yes, you were in a, a, an adult frame of mind. You had the reasoning abilities of an adult when you committed this crime. And people will rejoice, and they call that justice. But, but, if it's sexual in nature, and more often than not, if it's a man doing it to a woman or a girl, well, it's totally impossible that an adolescent teenager can have an adult frame of mind and be making decisions as though they were an adult. Having It is completely unfathomable that a, a young girl, a non-adult girl, can have the reasoning abilities of an adult as applied to this sexual relationship. Oh my God, that can't ever happen. Because, because why? I want to know why. Because those two things are true. The fact that people will rejoice at adolescent teens being tried as adults because the powers that be, the authorities believe they were in an adult frame of mind when they committed the crime. People will rejoice at that. That is true. It is also true that people believe, many of those same people believe that it is completely impossible for an adolescent, a non-adult teenager, to have the reasoning abilities, the reasoning capabilities of an adult when engaging in a sexual relationship. And I want to know why. I want to know why that's, one, the case, and two, how that passes, how there aren't, like, logical big red sirens going off, like, mur, 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 this is crap. What you're saying is crap. What you're saying is crap and hypocritical. It's completely hypocritical. And ho, 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 more often than not, the people tried as adults, the adolescents tried as adults, are men. Ha, ah, ah, okay. Makes us all feel better. That's what, that's what popular, that's what outrage culture will get you. Oh, my God, we can't have this. We can't have the, the ability. We can't, it can't possibly be that a teenager, a non-adult was able to make decisions as an adult or adult decisions we'll call them at the time it's completely impossible put that man in jail and defrock that judge or what, what is it censure censure that judge get him off the bench he should be tried for a crime yeah ha <laughs> because it's totally impossible isn't it possible that this kid at 16 years old knew exactly what he was doing and he was like, holy crap, I'm about to have a threesome with two not ugly teachers. And they want it bad. They want to, they, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, they want to get to, uh, 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 and they want it. So much so that they will, like, it was like orchestrated. It's not like they were at a bar at a party and they just got drunk and did the, did the nasty. No, it was like, okay, who's driving who to the threesome? Who's taking, are we taking, are we carpooling? Do you take multiple cars to a threesome? Do you take multiple cars to a threesome with a minor? I, I don't know. It seems like people might notice those amount, that, those extra cars in, a, in an apartment complex. So it might be better to just take one car to a threesome, especially if you're going to involve a minor. But isn't it possible that this guy was like, yeah, I'm 16 years old. And, you know, I'm about to, I'm about to do the nasty, bump uglies, knock boots. With two, with one, yeah, teacher and one like, hey, hey, all right. And I know what I'm doing, and I want to do it, and I like it, and given the opportunity, I'm going to do it again. Now, and here's the, here's the ultimate trump card. Play that scenario out for people. 
that the 16-year-old male student was perhaps able to understand the consequences of what he was doing, weigh outcomes, and make a reasonable, rational decision on par with an adult. He made an adult decision. Somehow, I'm be- I-, I will bet you, I will bet you any amount of money that people, people on average will be more receptive of that l- mode of thinking. You will get more, eh, yeah, it's possible, responses than outraged responses. Now, try that again with the 14-year-old girl in the case in Montana. You know what? I bet she was a proper frame of mind. I bet she liked it. I bet she knew it was what she was doing. She knew what was going to happen. She knew what it entailed. She liked it. She wanted it. And if given the opportunity, she would have kept doing it because it was good. It's good. Try that. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. Way more outrage when you're talking about the 14-year-old female being statu- being raped than when talking about the 16, the 16-year-old, now 17-year-old being raped. Hmm? Yeah. And she killed herself. Oh, well, she killed herself. Why? Why'd she kill herself? Because of this? Or because when the story broke out, people were harassing her and saying mean things about her, and that, the bullying, caused her to kill herself, not the, oh, my God, the impending doom because this guy was habitually raping me. Maybe she liked it. Isn't that possible? Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you like the look in the mirror, society? How do you like it? You don't like it too much, do you? I didn't uh, didn't think so. But I'll, 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 I'll say it. This kid probably liked it. He probably did. He was like, yup. Mm-hmm. Give him a high five. Because it was, oh, gee. Yeah. Two reasonably attractive. Well, one reasonably attractive and one hot teacher in a threesome? What? Hell yeah. That's not a crime. These, these two women are guilty of a crime. I mean, you want to talk about, was it right for them to arrest? Sure. Arrest and investigate. Because the fact of the matter is, it is illegal to have sex with a child if you are above a certain age and they are below a certain age. Or a person. You, not necessarily a child. A child is duh. That's, that's easy. But it's illegal. Okay, you arrest and then you investigate. And then you go, oh, well, this guy knew what he was doing, knew what he wanted, knew he, knew what was going to happen, he liked it, and would have continued doing it. But not a crime. Charges dismissed. Go on about your business. Don't do it again because the next time you might not be so lucky. And that's the other thing, too. Every time this happens, when it, whether it's a male teacher or a female, whether it's a male teacher with a female student or a female teacher with a male student or just teacher-student, because, you know, there's probably male-on-male, girl-on-girl action. You know, find that stuff on the internet. Every single time, these people are booked, mugshotted, dragged through the mud, and more often, than, usually put in prison. Or there's some kind of bad stuff that happens to them. Like, really bad. For the rest of their, their lives are irrevocably altered because of this. Is the sex really that good? Is it really really that good trust me this one this one teacher both of them could probably go out to any bar any night in america and secure themselves some piss. they can find themselves a, a, a guy to take home a girl to take home a guy and a girl to take home you walk up to any couple hey how's it going let's have some drinks and then yeah time in the back in the you know you could do it why the 16 year old is it really that good? Again, you can go out anywhere and find whatever you want. If you are of reasonable attractiveness, you can go out and you can go out and find it. Why put yourself at risk in doing the nasty with a minor? Why would you ever think to do that? There ha- are what do you are you a crazy person? Because and and the 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 worst part is is that they are in a high school. So they know. It's not like you're at a bar where you play that game where it's like, oh, Jesus. Oh, God, I hope. Oh, crap. Oh, no. I don't know. I didn't ask. I didn't ask to see an ID. I didn't. Damn it. Oh, God, I really hope. Oh, I really hope it's not. It's re- I really hope it's not what I think it might be. Please. 
please don't be that. Oh, sweet Jesus, please don't be that. That's what you, th- you're like, oh, Jesus. You don't have to play that game in high school because you know, like I teach sophomore English. What's the talent pool? In sophomore English class, what's the average age of the talent pool? If you're a female teacher or a male teacher and you're looking to get some, and you're like, oh, well, what if I go to my English class? Well, I teach sophomore English, so what is the average age of that supposed or proposed talent pool? Oh, it's probably pretty low. Probably go to jail low. Uh, uh, Probably shouldn't do it. I'll just go out to a bar. If it doesn't work, just go home and, you know, Rub one out. So there had to be something. I just want to know how good does the sex need to be in order to warrant possible felony charges? Because they knew, there's no doubt that they knew that this kid was not 18 years old. Now, it it, it may be possible that he lied about his birthday. To them, like, are you in this state? It may be if you're 17, like 17 is the new 18. And if you're 17, you can consent, but certainly not before 17. And his birthday was in a month. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm assuming that none of that applies here. I'm assuming that they knew without a doubt he was 16. How good does the sex have to be? How good do you have to like, oh, well, I may go to jail, but by God, I'm going to go to jail with a smile on my face. All right, let's uh, let's do one more, one more story before uh, before we get out. Uh, this is this is a story. This is from TimesLive.co.za. White lesbian mother sues sperm bank after she gave birth to mixed race baby. Jennifer Cramblett of Ohio is seeking financial compensation from a sperm bank after they accidentally gave her sperm from a black man, which resulted in a mixed-race baby girl. Cramblett realized she had received the wrong sperm a few months into her pregnancy. A lesbian, Cramblett had requested the sperm so that she and her partner could experience the joy of raising a child together. According to the Chicago Tribune, her joy was short-lived upon requesting more sperm from the same donor to have a second child. The sperm bank delivered a different vial of sperm. Cramblett and her partner, Amanda, decided to sue the sperm bank. Part of their lawsuit is below. On August 21st, 2012, Jennifer gave birth to Peyton, a beautiful, obviously mixed-race baby girl. The lawsuit states, Jennifer bonded with Peyton easily, and she and Amanda love her very much. Even so, Jennifer lives each day with fears, anxieties, and uncertainty about her future and Peyton's future. Isn't that being a parent? Let me read that again. Even so, Jennifer lives each day with fears, anxieties, and uncertainty about her future and Peyton's future. Peyton is a mixed-race baby girl, the child of this lesbian mother. This mother, it doesn't even matter she's lesbian. Doesn't every parent have fear and anxieties and uncertainty about the future of their children and themselves? That's like that's called being a human. That's what human existence is. It's a series of fears and anxieties and overcoming them and then more crop up and it's how you deal with them and can you find a nice little place where you can exist and not be overcome by fear, irrational or otherwise. That's life. That's life. Oh, that's what people say. That's that's human existence. This lesbian is suing a sperm bank for, oh my God, you're making me be a parent. I, every day, I agonize and I worry about whether my child will get into the good school or will be bullied or will be prom queen or will get a nice boyfriend or girlfriend or will do well in school or will we have enough money? Can I support her? Every day I worry about all these things. That's being a parent, you idiot. The sperm bank is not responsible for you having the anxieties associated with being a parent. That's not their liability. Oh, you're making me be a parent, sperm bank. How dare you? Because, and, and, I, and, I, and I make that differentiation because this is, a, this is a tough one for liberals, like ultra liberals, because 
You've got the ultra liberal lesbian side of the coin. But then the flip side is the mixed race baby. And this les this this lesbian who hit, who it, who satisfies that ultra liberal quota, this lesbian is suing a sperm bank because she had a mixed race baby. It again, it can't be. It cannot be that she is so dumb that she is suing a sperm bank because she has anxieties associated with being a parent. It can't be. It can't be. Nobody's that stupid. Nobody could possibly be that ever loving stupid. Nobody. I, I'm sorry. You can't be that dumb. You cannot possibly be that dumb and entitled. It is impossible. So, what it must be is a guise for, ooh, I don't want to have a mixed race baby. I don't want to have a black child. Now, the, the, the lawsuit, the language apparently pays lip service to, oh, they bonded and they love each other. Bull crap. Then why are you suing? Why are you suing for damages? You were damaged by what? By what? Again, it's not the anxieties of being a parent because that happens all the time. It's because it's a mixed race baby. This is a racist lesbian. This is a racist lesbian. Now I want to know, I want to put it to the ultra liberals, whose side are you going to come down on? Or go down on? Whose side are you going to, or is it the ultra liberal lesbian? Like, oh, Oh, you got to, she was damaged. She was hurt by this. Or is it the mixed race baby? The racism element. Holy crap. Oh, ultra liberal lesbian is ra also racist. Which one are you going to, which one are you going to choose? I'll let you, I'll let you, uh, let you chew on that one for a while. Let's bring it home. Another great episode of The Lefty Show. I thank you all for joining me. I had a great time putting on the show for you. I hope you had a great time listening. Thank you to everybody for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to find the show in its YouTube formation as well as video gaming and vlogging content. That's YouTube.com slash LeftyOX. Thank you to everybody that's been following me on Twitter. Stay up to date on all the latest and greatest Lefty Show news. Twitter.com slash Lefty643 or just at Lefty643. Thank you to everybody that's been sharing the show with friends, family, and co-workers. It definitely helps the show grow. Try it out for yourself wherever you get your podcasts for your PC, tablet, or mobile device. Android, iOS, it doesn't matter. Search The Lefty Show wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to subscribe to uh, the feed and download all the episodes at your leisure. Thank you to everybody that's been donating. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. Anyway, guys, that's my time. I got to get out of here. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy your weekend. I'll catch you next time. I'm out. Bye. Money!